Uh, am I audible? Yes, yes, we can hear you. He is also an expert in many other services such as brand consulting, human resource, consumer service, consumer services, public speaking, executive coaching, and leadership development. We are delighted to have you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, Bhavna. Thank you, everyone. Uh, next uh, further procedure is taken over by Ms. Afreen Islam. She is an HR manager at uh, Air Reservation Private Limited and graduated from IIM Shimal. Okay. Hello, Deepa, ma'am. Hi. Hi, Afreen. Please address me as Deepa. Okay. Um, okay. Fine. <laughs> fine. <laughs> yeah. So, how is everything going? Thank you very well. And I hope. Uh, Everything is fine and safe at you know everyone's yeah. place. Whoever has yeah. logged in or will watch the recording of this, yeah, yeah we just, hope this session and this webinar would be a successful one. Okay, yeah. so I have few questions to ask. I was so curious. Actually, I'm interested in learning about body language, so I have some particular questions to ask you. Sure. So the first question is: I think if you could just speak a little louder, a little. Louder. Okay. Okay. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Uh, the first question is how to use body language in self introduction wow how do i use my body language in self introduction well i guess that is uh, one of the most important aspect because we are making our first impressions when we are meeting someone and uh, I'm, I'm sure you guys must be aware even if you're not then this is a very good important information that we make our first impressions within you know 7 seconds 5 to 7 seconds when back in 2014, Afreen, I started, you know, teaching about, you know, uh, the dressing, the grooming and majorly the non-verbal communication. Um, we used to tell, you know, it's 15 seconds, 15 to 20 seconds we make a judgment. But the research and the science came back to us and saying that, no, we make snap judgments about people in first five seconds. So what are those crucial elements that are important when I am introducing myself to others? All right, so let's say it's that first 10 seconds. When anyone sees you, you know, for the first time, your words, so, so the way I want to explain is there is something called as communication framework. Now in this communication framework, they say that 7% is my words, 38% is going to be my tone of voice, and 55% is my non-verbal communication, my body language. Now tone of voice and body language, if you club it together, that's 93% of my communication is actually non-verbal. It definitely matters what kind of posture you have. But way before, even if you speak that, you know, first word uh, in introducing yourself, there are a couple of things that you would want to uh, take care of. One is maintain the eye contact with the person whom you're going to meet. So having an eye contact, a subtle smile, and a nod. So I call this as S-E-N, send. So you need to have smile because you want to come across as warm, friendly, confident, and approachable. You maintain an eye contact so there is an, you know, there is this trust that starts building with the person the moment you meet. And then there is a nod. A nod is for acknowledgement. The second tip would be, so of course there is smile, uh, eye contact, and nod. Practice your introduction. Hi, my name is Deepa Kaur. Well, nice to meet you today. My name is Deepa Kaur. Thank you for calling me in. What is it that you're going to say? Practice your first 10 words because someone has already made a judgment about you, whether they want to work with you, whether they want to hire you, uh, whether they want to get things done from you, right? And this is applicable for anyone and everyone, whether you're in sales, whether you're a doctor, whether you're an engineer, a lawyer, anyone. The first impressions matter and the rules remain the same. Yeah, I must say you are a very interesting person because the way you have started and the way you showed some example, it was very insightful. Okay, the, <laughs> yeah, the second question is, why is nonverbal communication important? Oh, uh, why is, okay, uh, why is nonverbal communication important? One, uh, you know, so one of the reasons why I really feel it is important once when I learned it and the beauty of it, uh, this is one topic that is not being taught in either of the schools or colleges. We are left at the mercy, you know, if you want to learn it by yourself, learn it. 
there is no curriculum as such. And did you know, Afreen, that there is a part in our brain that actually decodes body language for us? It's like a muscle in our body which is never used. And so when we start, uh, you have no idea, you know, when we do this body language training for people in sales, if someone just entered, I'll just admit to you. Um, in sales, it's like your, your customers, your clients are already saying and loved uh, before you have even, you know, started speaking about it. So as a cabin crew myself, I have seven years of experience as a cabin crew. Three years was with Kingfisher Airlines from 2007 till 10. And from 10 to 13, I was with Singapore Airlines. I worked with nine different nationalities and traveled more than 50 countries. And one thing that worked for me always was whether I knew Italian, German, French didn't matter. But as far as I was able to anticipate what the other person has to say just through their gestures and meaning, that helped me a lot in my communication. So one thing is, yes, in a 30 minute conversation, two people can actually end up giving more than 800 nonverbal signals. And imagine if we focus only on what we have to say or what we are listening, that's not enough. So yes, uh, people give subtle signs, whether they are in agreement with you, whether they like you, whether they hate you. They give out their answers through their body language, their gestures, their facial expressions. So it's as good as, you know, oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. I'm very happy to be here on a Saturday afternoon. Perfect. If you were to mute me and read my body language, it's like no matter whatever this person is saying, she's in disagreement because my head is going left to right. So if I want to show that I am in agreement with what you're saying, it's like, hey, you know what, Afreen, thank you so much for inviting me today. My nod will be more in a yes manner. So I believe uh, that is why nonverbal communication is important one, because it is the maximum uh, uh, you know, amount or percentage of communication that we do. Second, nobody has really taught it. And third, it actually gives out way before the person has spoken verbal word. Yeah, that truly answers my question. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so the third question is uh, something related to uh, when we talk to our clients. So whenever we approach a client, so we have to keep everything on track. Our body language should also be very comfortable. We have to be accommodating, make him feel comfortable. So how to approach him? What uh, gestures we should show so that he is convinced and he is relaxed? Okay, so when you're saying you're approaching the client right now, uh, would that be in a virtual way or face-to-face? -face? Yeah, you can tell us both. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, give me a scenario. If you can just give me one small scenario, like what, what is that interaction? Okay, so about? yeah, yeah, yeah. Suppose, uh, for example, we are meeting a new client okay. regarding a certain project. Okay, for example, we have to sign... A, an agreement okay so he's a kind of professional person and we have to approach him so uh, in a virtual meet what should be the gestures or what technicality should be taken care of so that he thinks okay this company we can trust that i am asking if you can throw some light upon it <laughs> sure so i would like to answer that in two parts one is when in physical okay you are meeting the person and even for the virtual. So there are a few tips where you can really be aligned and come across as absolutely professional to the other person, even on a virtual format. So like I answered in the very first question, what are those things that I would want to do to create my first impressions? Well, follow the same, follow the first word that will count, okay? Uh, the third, I will, have to, I will also have to be a mirror image of that person. Okay, so smile is definitely the one. Uh, I could also have a choice that, hey, you know what? Uh, uh, the, uh, I'm doing a Zoom interview today. Let me just wear my T-shirt and I will just do a ponytail. But no, you do see me that I have put in efforts. But no, I'm formally dressed because my impressions are going to matter. I am a speaker here. Though I do understand my participants will be casually dressed. But when you have to make a mark, you better make sure you are well-dressed too. Um, speak proper language, whether that is Hindi, English, whatever that is, because you you may have knowledge, but your behavior is what you will be judged most of the time. So here is my tip for most of the time that don't treat other people the way you would like to be treated. We have been born and brought up with this fundamental, 
right? Treat others the way you would like to be treated. But the fact is, all of us are different. So treat others the way they would like to be treated. Put yourself in the shoe of your customer that if I am going to such and such organization, what is my expectation? And take your action steps accordingly. Second part B of it virtually, uh, your background matters. Now I'm not talking about your background as such, but your virtual background matters. So make sure it is plain, uh, you know, it has not much of information to wear contrasting colors. So what you are wearing our frame right now works very well. You have a white background, you are wearing a black top, you have a very beautiful black hair that gives the, you know, an outline here to your face. This oh, is, no, 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 it's all completely oily today. <laughs> no, 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 that's the way to look at it. That's, that's really the way to look at it. Now, what what is the alteration that I would like to do if you're creating the first impressions virtually? I believe, Afrin, you have put in your phone, which I believe would have a hook, something like this. And it's probably down because I can see your eyes going from top to bottom, like, you know, up to down. Is that correct? Or is that a laptop? It is a laptop, yeah. The laptop, it seems to be a little bit on um, a lower side. Now, please remember, yeah. whenever you are on a virtual call, your lens of the camera, whether it is the phone or the laptop, should be at your eye level. And whenever you're looking at the screen, so right now I'm looking at the, at the right hand side of my screen, I will look into the lens of the camera and talk. So this way, everybody else feels that she's looking right into my eyes. So two things here, the lens of the camera should be at my eye level. So at no given point in time, I look down. That's the whole idea or I am looking up. It should be at the eye level and uh, look into the lens of the camera wear contrasting colors. So I have like a brownish background. I will not wear something which is peach, yellow. I would wear something black or blue. So it has to be contrasting with the background. Um, choose a location where the light falls either on the side or if better, the light in your room or wherever your workstation is falls straight on your face because it's very important to have a clear picture that you are talking to. Now imagine if there was a window behind and light coming all over, I would look like an angel to you right now, like a halo effect. And that's causing a distraction. You know, you're like busy saying, oh wow, there's so much of brightness behind. So we want to remove as much as distraction as we can and bring in the focus all towards our face. Uh, my last tip here to create good impressions or have that impact virtually is uh, the way you position yourself from the gadget. All right, now I have a table here. Okay, I have a portable table, I have a laptop. So when I open the laptop, the lens is right near my eye level. There are a couple of ways that people sit. I could rest my arms. So my face is so close and this is really a very zoomed in view. Put your hands at the desk, wherever you are, and give yourself a push by half arm. So at any given moment, your head, your face, and a little bit of your upper body should be visible. You know why? Because when I'm this close, I'm using my hands, you can't see it. But now when I use my hands, you can see it. I'm using my hands to express. And this somewhere becomes a very subconscious need of anyone who's talking to you that whether I can see the person's hand or not. So even if it's a virtual call, in fact, uh, Arfin has been said that since the lockdown has happened and people are working from home, communication has doubled. They are actually communicating more than ever. The brand's communicating with our customers. Why not we? Aren't we communicating more than ever? And the funny fact here is in a virtual communication, my neutral message goes out as negative and a positive message goes out as neutral. So that is why your body language definitely matters even in a virtual because let's say where we have technical errors. At some point in time, you may not hear my voice, but you can see, okay, I'm trying to express something. My screen could also be freezed, but with my tone of voice and my message being continued, my audio being continued to hear, the other person can understand my message. So uh, these are the uh you know two parts that i would like to answer how can i come across to my client and customers virtually and through uh face to face i hope i was able to answer this one 
yes you answered two questions so thank you i would ask the fifth question how to control nervous gestures a lot of time people are nervous while talking to new people or this is a very uh, common phenomena at every place whether it's a college or an organization so how to control those gestures so you see what i'm doing right now right i see so many people doing this now what are these nervous gestures as children okay when we were really really little babies whenever we had a need we cried and when we cried how were we comforted an adult either one of our parents or relatives would pick us up and do what soothe us yeah now these gestures okay these positive strokes these self soothing gestures somehow they turn into negative gestures as we grow into adult because as adult we want to be very rational we want to come across as very confident so some of these nervous gestures are biting of your lips okay turning of the knuckle Okay. Uh, probably, if I have a book or something, I will clench onto my upper front of body so that you know I don't want to really face what I'm facing. I will give lack of eye contact. I would also do something called as cramming and tapping. I will fidget. We also play with our jewelry around. Okay, we touch, check your rings are fine, wristwatch are fine. These are all considered as nervous gestures. Now, majority of the time, the nervous gestures are given through our hands. Okay, so controlling your hands become the major option. So, in fact, with you and everybody else who are uh, attending the the webinar right now, you could practice with me. So, just imagine that through your navel. Okay, there are two tips I'm going to give you here. The number one is through your hands. How do you control nervousness through your hands? So, imagine that at your navel point there is a transparent table. Now, below this table point, your hand will not go. Okay, you will touch your thumb. all your fingertips together and you will anchor it somewhere in the center of your chest so just in a way that your hand is resting on this transparent table which is just above your belly now i will keep this i can give my introduction like this so afrin tell me what do you have to say you see how i used my one hand i kept this here stable practice with me one two Three. You could also use both your hands. So the point I was trying to make here is what I wanted to emphasize on. This is really very important. You see how making my hands visible, still making them move in a very way which is more expressive and not getting distracted, rather than doing any one of these or. worse come worse not showing my hands at all and just sitting like this in front of the screen and talking so while i may have smiled i may have eye contact i may come across as warm but something's missing you know what and that's my hand so we end up giving up a lot of nervous gestures through our hands so practice this pose is called as steeple pose now remember if this is a sign of confidence this is a sign of lack of confidence so never put your hands down it will always be like i said on this transparent table that you have just on top of your belly and you will use this the second tip in terms of body language how you can control your nervousness is we all have this point here on the neck so if i take a deep breath can you see this this is called as a super sternal notch a super sternal notch so if you just take a deep breath in you have to start just gently rub here for 3 4 times very smoothly with three four fingers before any meeting before any nervousness so they say that this is an anchor point for major of the nervousness which spreads across through your hands and your facial muscles now it's something very similar to you know what when you're drinking water and by uh, you know uh, the, the water gets into the windpipe and you start coughing <coughs> what do we do we try to pat our chest now indirectly what we are doing is we are soothing ourselves by default touching here so this is called as a super sternal notch rubbing it with your hands three four times when you're nervous helps calm and soothe the person down and of oh, course deep breathing always helps yeah that works 
even i read somewhere the one the first gesture you showed a lot of professional people or business person do this during taking interviews or uh, i have also read it on facebook maybe that shows that a person is very confident when he uh, joins his fingers like that so, so this this yeah. particular gesture to be very honest came from i don't know if i'm right here uh, with 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 britishers and they have this gesture when i'm critically thinking yeah yeah so this became the pioneer of critical thinker that i'm actually thinking you know what i'm going to say so that's why and it controls your hand so there are a lot of people who are too expressive meaning their hand will go above their waistline and they are expressing too much now this is distraction and there are a lot of people who are very stiff so this gesture is one thing that opens them up and if they are like really too jazzy it brings them to control spot here right in the center okay yeah. okay that answered my question okay so the sixth question is what do you think about gesticulation is it needed if yes then when uh, so here i would like to say it is good to express uh, you know with all the possible tools that you have how you would choose what your style is there are a lot of people who like to be very subtle very calm they will not use much of your body language or gestures it's fine maybe it is the tone of voice which will help you but definitely science has it that when your non verbal communication is backed up you know verbally what am i saying and my non verbal language meets it the impact of my message is 12 to 13 times more because words 70 to 75% of the population are visual in nature they like what they see right very few people are auditory so if you want to express yes definitely you need to just use a lot of gestures you got to use a lot of facial expressions and you got to practice it it's better you come across as more convincing more persuasive and confident so definitely for me that would be a yes for sure okay okay that was an insightful uh, answers and also now i'm satisfied ki someone has answered all the questions which i was oh. having yeah. oh thank you so much afreen thank you yeah so bhavna now you can take further if any one of you have any questions or want to ask me something please feel free thank you Uh, thank you so much, ma'am. We learn a lot because of the session. Anyone want to ask any question? Please ask. Thank you. Uh, yes. So I have a question. Uh, yes, so my question goes like this. Um, so you mentioned what are the do's in a for in a conversation? What are the body language that you should have? Uh, but my question is when you have a meeting both face to face as well as in virtual what is what what are those things that you should not do that should not be done at all which gives a negative impact on your on how a person perceives you okay a uh, couple of things that you should not do is try to use so when i say use your hands definitely use your hands which which is somewhere at this portion of your body now using of hands for is negative so use your hands but away from your face um don't block yourself so if in case you're carrying a bag with you or something don't keep it on your lap keep it at a proper space and at a equal level with you because everything that you carry becomes a part of your personality so if you're carrying a bag do not keep it down on the floor put it on the sofa next to you or pull a chair and keep it there um third thing is i will tell you what you should do in terms of body language whenever you are in a meeting face the person whom you are talking to when i say face is your tip of your forehead your frontal body and your toes should be facing the person in conversation with so let's say i have two people when a person sitting here is talking to me i would gently shift my body and this is a swivel chair where i'm sitting had this not been the choice i would gently lift my body turn it communication and when this happens i would quickly shift and talk to this person my focus goes 
when the person is stroking my body turns that way. So in fact, when you do this, you are kind of mirroring the person and uh, that helps you build the connect. Don't be rude to people. Be courteous. Keep your mobile phones on silent, pro pro you know, preferably facing down on a silent mode and facing down. Uh, so your face-to-face -face communication will any given day supersede any other communication. You can always return to that call that has come. Uh, but don't let such, uh, you know, uh, gadgets snap that moment of creating uh, or building a relationship with the person who is right here, right now uh, with you. And uh, yeah, I guess uh, that would be all at the moment. This is what I can think of. Sure. Thank you so much. Thank you, Donia. Yes. Great. So anyone has any questions, you can ask me in the chat or. Great. Ma'am, can I ask one question, please? Yes, please. Ma'am, if we have more than one uh, interviewer, so how will we do the eye contact with them? Oh, very good. If you have more than one interviewer, how will you maintain the eye contact? So this actually puts me back to my uh, Kingfisher interview, which happened. And when I entered, there were three people sitting. So one thing is definitely that as you walk in through the room, you walk in, you know, with a very good body posture, shoulders apart, looking up straight. The moment you start entering the room, gaze through an eye contact with everybody. Now, when I say eye contact, don't do this. Look at one person, smile, nod, the next person. So if you notice, uh, if you've ever heard of something called as TED Talks, okay? Uh, so in TED Talks is a platform where world speakers, they come in and uh, they are presenting on their expertise and you have 20 minutes to share an idea. Now, one of the few of the best speakers that have come on a TEDx platform, this is what they do. Okay, they ask the organizers to switch on the light of the people who are listening to them. And imagine you're talking about two or three people. The speaker at the TED Talks have like thousands of people right in front of them. They ask the organizers to switch on the light where the participants or the audience is sitting and they gaze through. And begin. So you can take those five seconds to, you know, you have walked in, you have stood. Then give a nod. Have an eye contact with all three and then give a nod that yes, you are now good to go. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Was that Tarika? Yes, ma'am. Tarika. I, I have a very good friend of mine. Her name is Parika. Uh, something very really rhyming and, uh, you know, rhyming with your name, Parika, Tarika. Interesting. Yes, ma'am. Very unique name. Never heard that before. Great. Anyone else has any question? Please feel free to ask. All right. Manbir, you are from aviation industry. You may ask any question related to aviation if you want. It's a, it's a good chance for you. <laughs> uh, Deepa, I just want to introduce you with uh, Manbir Kaur. She is a aer aero engineer with us. Okay. 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 So far, like it's been really interesting, and I have already got so many answers to my questions. So I don't think like I have any questions left with this and I really loved, like I enjoyed this session. I got to know many new things. Great. Thank you. Pleasure is all mine. <laughs> Thank you, Manbir. Yes. Okay. So. 